This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydro Mag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. Welcome to the world's only hydroponic magazine show. This is Hydro Show and here's what's coming up in today's episode. Coming up on today's show, Gemma gets some lessons in plant propagation. The girls battle it out for another presenter challenge. Pooja interviews Dan, manufacturer of the Uvenair ozone generator. We also get some tips from Green Finger Hydroponics, South Coast Hydroponics and Wortley Hydroponics. Urban Hydroponics in Preston give us their interpretation of a hydroponic mega room. All that and more on the world's only hydroponic TV show. First of all, I went to aquaculture in Sheffield where Nico gave me a lesson in plant propagation. Hi, I'm here with our friends at aquaculture in Sheffield today and I'm going to learn how to plant seeds and put them onto propagation. So let's go inside and meet Nico, who should be expecting us. Okay, so I'm here with Nico and he's going to show me how to propagate some seeds using different growth mediums. So here we have four different growth mediums here. Can you explain what they are? Yep, this is the Rockwell Cube. This one is compressed and dried peat pellet. This is compressed and dried cocoa pellet. And this is the rooted organic sponges that we'll be using. Okay, so why do we use different growth mediums? Um, a lot of it's down to personal choice, um, also a lot of it is down to what you're going to be transplanting it onto. If you're going to be planting into a cocoa pot, it's always a good idea to use the cocoa pellets. If you're going to be transplanting into a larger Rockwell cube for an NFT system, start with the Rockwell cube. But again, a lot of it is down to personal choice. You can really plant in any one of these and then transplant into anything else that you, you want to afterwards. Mm. Okay, so we're alright to put the seeds in there now, straight away. No, they need to be pre-soaked, so get them treated and ready to put the seeds in there. With the rock wall, you generally want to soak these for anything from an hour onwards in water that's been had the pH lowered to about 5.5, and you want uh, a good sort of plant food for young seedlings, some, something like vitamin plant start. Uh, leave them soaking for an hour just to neutralise the lime in there, then they're good to go. The peat pellets just need to be thrown in water. They contain a bit of nutrient, so they're fine. The cocoa, you need to soak these in a weak nutrient solution, again something like plant star and a pH of roughly around about 6.1. And the organic sponges do come slightly moist, but it's, I find it's a good idea to soak them again in something like plant star um, and again at a pH of roughly 6.1. Great stuff, okay. If you're looking for advice on planting seeds, you can also see advice from our resident expert, Bill, in episode one of Hydro Show. Both Bill and Nico have written articles to go with these tutorials, and you can find them in our official magazine, Hydromag. See issues four and five, available online and in selected hydroponic stores throughout the UK. So we've soaked all our mediums, what next? So now it's just a case of getting them into the, the cell trays. Uh, the Rockwall cubes, they've been soaking for approximately an hour in quite a low pH water of about 5.5 pH and half strength EC or low, low EC. Uh, reduce the water content, you don't want them too wet, and pop them in the tray. So with the Fleximix Rootsit cubes, they've been soaking for about five minutes just in the uh, a nutrient, half strength nutrient solution with a pH of roughly about six, just over six. Again, reduce the water content so it's not too wet. Pop that in the tray. The cocoa pellets have been soaking for about 10 to 15 minutes in a pH water of about 6.1 and again about a weak nutrient solution. We've been using vitamin plant start. Um, again, reduce the water content 
Pop that in the tray. And the peat pellets have just been soaking in pure water uh, because the peat contains a residual amount of nutrient. You don't need to put any extra nutrient in the water for soaking with that. Okay. So again, reduce the water content until it's not completely dripping. Yeah. Pop it in the tray. Then it's just a case of planting the seeds. Brilliant. So we've talked about the four different types of growth medium there. Should we fill the rest of the cell tray? Yeah, let's get it done. Okay, Nico, so we've filled the cell tray now. Mm -hmm. uh, now I've got some seeds in my hand. Will you show me how to plant them? Yep, I can do. So it's a slightly different methods of uh, planting seeds for each one. The cocoa and the peat pellets are fairly similar. You simply pop a little hole in the top, about a centimetre and a half deep. You want to pop your seed in. And what's that using there? Uh, this is a stake for a humidity dome. Uh, you can use anything as long as it's got fairly small and narrow, narrow tip. You know, a bit of plastic or anything will do. So I just put one seed just like that, yep. just pop it in there? Yep. Okay. So once it's in the hole, just cover it up so it doesn't get any light to it. Okay. Same with the cocoa pellets. Cover that up again. Uh, the rock wall is slightly different. You just need to prize open a little hole in the rock wall cube. Pop just the seed in there. in there. And then you just close back the hole. Just gently push the rock wall fibres so it seals the hole. And the Fleximix cubes already have a hole in there pre-drilled. So if you just pop your seed in there, and you simply tear a small bit of the Fleximix and gently cover that up so it blocks the light. And that's it. Great stuff. Okay, so now we've put all of our seeds in, what comes next? Well now it's just a case of getting the propagator lid and putting that over there to maintain a high humidity, keep these closed. Um, and make sure they're watered, you know, don't, you don't want them to dry out, so you'll probably mm. have to water them usually once every two or three days. And what's the ideal temperature though for these now? Well, the, they're sat on a heat mat here, so we have heating elements running under the whole table. Try to keep the, the root zone to around about sort of 20 degrees. Uh, because it's in a greenhouse, it's quite variable, uh, the temperature, but generally you'll try and keep it around about 20 degrees. So now they're in the propagator, how long do you think before we can transplant these now? Uh, well, they should start sprouting within about a week and a half. Um, you know, 10 to 14 days or so, and then they'll be ready for transplanting after about three or four weeks once they've developed a, a few sets of leaves on there and get them potted up. Fantastic. So if we come back in about three weeks' time, we should see a difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll see you then. Thank you. Splendid. It's that time in the show again where the two of us are given a presenter challenge. So let's find out what this week's challenge is all about. In this week's presenter challenge, you must each go to a different grocery store with a thousand pounds and buy a system for propagation, cloning and stock plants. Bring your systems back to the studio for assessment by the Hydra Show producers. I'm here at Perryvale in London at Greenfinger Hydroponics. I'm here to meet Panch, who's hopefully going to give me some advice on stock plant and propagation system. Hiya. Hiya. I'm after a two-tier tent system where I can keep a mother plant and plenty of cuttings. I've got a thousand pounds. Can you help me out? Yeah, definitely. No problem. You're in the right place. Okay, Gemma, so you've got a decent budget there. So this is the tent I put you on. It's a Secret Jardin DR120T. So it's got all the features you'd expect from a good grow tent, um, except for obviously as well it's a propagation tent, so you've got a propagation unit that sits on the top of it, uh, specifically designed to be strong enough to take that and all the equipment you need. It's also got a thermally insulated layer in between, so you're not going to overheat your cuttings even though you've got a light on underneath. So would it be just one plant you were looking to grow then? Well actually, one of the criteria of the presenter challenge is to be versatile, mm -hmm. so if I've got more than one mother plant, then I think I've got a better chance of winning. Okay, well that makes sense that you might want more than one because there's a few advantages to having a more than one plant, obviously. 
You could uh, have different varieties, you might have different, different types of cutting up top, or if you needed to take a lot of cuttings of the same variety, then that's going to be easier with five plants, obviously. You look like a fairly modern, up-to-date person, so this is a very modern system just out. Uh, it's called System 5, obviously a five-pot dripper system. Uh, it's an active hydro system, so it's going to pump your nutrients through your, through your dripper rings here for your plants to take the nutrients they need as and when they need it. Um, and this is actually a 200 litre tank underneath here, believe it or not, so you've got plenty of water in there. And uh, you can fill up from there as well, obviously. And when you need to empty it, there's just a little hole there that you can attach a pipe and a pump to. So all dead easy. So this is uh, just a little, cute little humidifier we've put in. Um, humidity is really important for mothers and cuttings. You're going to get much better growth if you keep the stomata of your plant open, which is temperature and humidity related. So down the bottom, I've got a 250 watt metal halide. Uh, that's going to provide enough wattage and enough penetration to actually give you good growth on mother plants. Up the top here, you wouldn't need anywhere near as much wattage for little baby cuttings, which are only going to be, remember, about this big. Um, so this is a T5. It's a nice, uh, even light spread off it, so you're not going to get the cuttings bending to try and reach the light. Uh, and also, it's only 54 watt per tube. It's a four tubes, 54 watts each tube. So as you can see, it can get nice and low without burning them or stressing them out too much. So two different types of light for two different types of growth. Panch then went on to explain that he would be supplying Gemma with an extraction fan and filter for the cloning area, and another one for the mother area along with a clip fan. Now what do Greenfinger recommend for nutrition? Okay, so I'm going to put you on the bioponic range from Hydrotops. Um, you've got a basic root stimulator, which does what it says on the tin. You've got Head Start here that's good for feeding cuttings with. Obviously the grow food there is for your bigger your plants, your mothers. And you've got Leaf Feed, which is a foliar spray that at half strength you can feed your cutting with full strength it will bring the mothers on a lot more vigorously a lot more quickly. Bactivator here is beneficial microbes which will protect the roots against things like pythium and also because it generally strengthens the plant it will help protect it against spider mite things like that as well make it much more hard much harder for things like that to attack it and then at the end I've thrown you in a root safari as well uh, and this is a gel that you make up yourself and then you dip your rooted cuttings in it and that will help protect them against sh transplant shock and root disease. So I've glossed over that a little bit, it just giving you very basic information. There's a lot more to it, but don't worry about that because we'll provide you with one of these books with, with the range so you'll know exactly what's going on. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm quietly confident about this challenge because I came in today expecting quite a basic setup, but what I'm coming away with is actually quite advanced. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. See you later. For her cloning system, Pooja went along to Holland Hydroponics in Burnley, where she met up with store manager Michael. Having won the last presenter challenge and evened up the score, can Pooja go into the lead with the cloning system from Holland? We'll start with the tent, so let's at the bottom of the shop and we'll go there now. Great, thank you. First, this is the mother tent, which is a silver back, which is a 1.2 metre tent by 2 metres high. As you can see, it's got a silver interior, and you've got your multiple ventilation points, two at the top and one at the bottom for your intake and your outtake. As you can see, you've got your bars to hold your reflector and your fans from. Um, then on the bottom, you've got uh, an extra liner, which is there just to protect your floor from any leakage or spillages. Right. Next, we have the Wilma system, which is a four-pot big Wilma. It's got an 18-litre size pot, so there's four of them, as you can see. Quite a large size pot, but because obviously mother plants are going to be kept in there for quite a long time, pretty much indefinitely, you always want to have uh, plenty of room for the roots to grow and develop. Um, you've got your, obviously your, your tray below and then your tank where all your nutrients is kept. You want to replace that on a weekly basis. Your pump obviously comes with the kit, sticks in the bottom, uh, drip comes up through the centre pipe and then splits off to the four parts through a dripper system which we can uh, show you later on. Um, that is pretty much the, the basics of the, the four pot Wilma. They are a really, very easy system you, to use. You can use pretty much any medium you want with it. So you can either go soil, uh, pebbles, or a mixture of both if you want to. Here we have the medium that we're going to be popping into your Wilma for you, which is the Hydro Cocoa 6040 by Gold Label, which is basically a, a mixture of pebbles and cocoa in a ratio of 60 40. That's uh, pebbles are 60 and the 40 is the cocoa, so it gives you the ideal drainage um, for your plants. Uh, this also benefits with the amount of oxygen that you get in there and also it will stop it from compacting quite a bit as well. So that's what we're using for your mother plants. Right. Here we have the light system which is going to be perfect for your mother plants. As you can see, this is the unit. Uh, comes with your ballast, your reflector and your bulb. Uh, standard wattage is a 400 watt, just a basic standard reflector, so it's ideal 
for your setup. Uh, the price is relatively competitive, so this allows us obviously to spend uh, more elsewhere with your nutrients and some of your other systems. Uh, the bulb is actually slightly different than the one we're actually going to be giving you today. Uh, this is a dual spectrum, which is ideal for if you were wanting to veg and flower at the same time. But we're going to go with metal halides that do work, look a little bit different, but this is a basically a pure blue spectrum, which is ideal for veg. Here we have the tent that we're going to be using for you. As you can see, we've already got the propagator in there that's going to be used for your cuttings. Uh, the tent is the exact same as the one we showed you earlier. It's a silverback, just a lot smaller. That's and that's it. for the cuttings? It is, yes. Next we have the lighter system, which is going to be ideal for your cuttings, to bring them on, uh, which is just above us, which is, as you can see, the EnviroGrow unit, which is two foot, four tube unit. Uh, each bulb is 24 watts, so it's a very low running cost and extremely low heat output, which is ideal for what you want when it comes to cuttings. Michael then went on to explain that Hollands would be providing an intake and outtake fan, along with a twin fan speed controller for the mother area. For the cloning area, he's gone with an outtake fan with a thermostat fan controller. Now let's see what Michael suggests for nutrition. First one, obviously, you've got your doctor repair which is pretty much plant health, everything that you want to make sure the plant's nice and healthy. So for a mother plant, which is ideal, especially if you're taking a lot of cuttings off them. Uh, second is your B1 boost, which is going to help your stem growth, uh, again, uptake of nutrients. You would use it all the way through veg and into flower, and it'll help with uh, your flowering side of it as well. But obviously, just because obviously it's a mother, we're just aiming for the plant health sort of side of it. Uh, next is your uptake which again, increase the nutrient uptake. So in a bulb plant, you always want to, to make sure it's nice and healthy, um, always has an, an available nutrients at all times. Second, you've got your base feed, which is your A and B, um, as you can see, A and B. Uh, always use equal parts of both, and that is literally your veg feed. Uh, next is your Clonix, which is for taking cuttings. Next one is the ATA root fast, which is basically once your cuttings have got some sort of root, you give them that, which is then going to promote more roots, roots better roots, quicker roots. Also, obviously, you want to use it in your mother plants as well, because the healthy roots so ball is beneficial. Next is Formlex, which is just a basic weak feed. It's a lot weaker than your A and B by Psycho, which is, again is ideal for your cuttings. You can also spray it as well. Thanks, Michael, for all your help today. I'll see you in the studio later this week. By all means, see you later. So what a great trip. I think I've got everything I need. So let's get back to the studio and hopefully Hollands have given me a winning system this time. Still to come on this week's episode of Hydro Show, we see the winner of this week's presenter challenge. Pooja interviews Dan, the manufacturer of the Uvenair Ozone Generator. We also get some quick tips from Greenfinger, South Coast and Wortley Hydroponics Urban Hydroponics in Preston give us their interpretation of a hydroponic mega room. All that and more on the world's only hydroponic TV show. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydromag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. Are you ready for bigger yields? Use the Advanced Nutrients Bigger Yields Growing Systems for the optimum results. Hobbyist. Expert. Professional. Grandmaster. More info at www.advancednutrientsuk.co.uk.
At Holland Hydroponics, you'll find a wide variety of hydroponic systems, accessories, plant nutrition, and the latest hydroponic innovations always in stock. Visit us now, in-store or online, where you'll find the brand new Shogun range of nutrient additives exclusive to Hollands in the northwest of England. Stores now open in Manchester, Burnley, Huddersfield and Flint, North Wales. Or visit our website at www.hydroponics.co.uk. Do you want a nutrient that matches all the requirements of any plant you choose to grow? Well, let us introduce to you the Aroma Formula. So variable, it fits all the plants you want to grow indoors. Speed up plant growth. Increase yields. Trusted by the professionals. Results you can easily see for yourself. The Aroma Formula. Now available at all fine hydroponic shops. Wortley Hydroponics, a new hydroponic superstore in Leeds. Open seven days a week. Wortley Hydroponics. Growing success. Visit www.wortleyhydroponics.co.uk. Find us on Facebook and YouTube. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydromag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. Last year at Grow Expo 2012, I met up with Dan from Ozone Environmental Technologies, the manufacturer of Uvenair Ozone Generator. And here's what he had to say. Hello and welcome back. We're currently joined by Dan from Ozone Environmental Technology. Welcome Dan. Thank you very much. So I'd like to ask you a few questions. Could you talk us through Uvenair, which is an ozone generation product? Well, let me ask you the question. You're familiar with ozone, but in many different uh, forms. Uh, perhaps uh, you've been outside in a lightning storm. Billions of grams of ozone are being produced. Also, uh, tanning beds, uh, ozone is produced, photocopiers as well. Uh, those are just some of the forms of, of ozone that you're familiar with on a day-to-day -day basis. We produce ozone in two different uh, methods. One is ultraviolet, the other is corona discharge. Uh, the ultraviolet unit is a unit whereby you're passing air over an ultraviolet bulb at a certain electrical charge to it that's taking the oxygen molecule, which is O2, and splitting one of the molecules, making it O3. The third molecule is a very active little rascal and it likes to eat organic material. When ozone is not being produced, it will consume itself and revert back to pure oxygen in both cases, with the ultraviolet and with the corona discharge. The ultraviolet unit we talked about, the corona discharge, it's a unit whereby you're passing an electrical charge between a ceramic glass in the center and a metal grid on the inside and the outside of the ceramic. Basically, it's making many lightning bolts and a lot of them. These units produce 10 times the ozone that the ultraviolet produce. And where we use them is a myriad of places in this industry, of course, in greenhouses and any hydroponic applications. So how does ozone fit into the hydroponic industry? Well, what we do is use ozone for sanitizing and disinfecting greenhouses. The uh, powdery mildews, mold, any bacteria, virus. And one of the, uh, the biggest problems is powdery mildew along with spiders and mites. Uh, you can use a variety of material to get rid of the spiders and mites, but it doesn't get rid of their eggs and one spider can produce 20, 30,000 eggs in a month period. So when you kill the mother spider, that's one thing, but she's got a lot of kids coming along behind her. And as a result, we use uh, the ultraviolet units for sterilizing your greenhouse first uh, to eliminate the eggs as well. So once this greenhouse has been totally sterilized, now we have a room that's as clean as an operating room in a hospital. Bear in mind, in an operating room in a hospital, 
after an operation has taken place, they autoclave all the utensils. And autoclaving is uh, 280 degrees of steam for a 20 hour period. In order to ensure 100% kill, they put it in an ozone bath after that, just to make sure everything is gone. So th that's the strength of ozone. We use it in several other industries as well. Uh, fire restoration, uh, where there's been flood damage over uh, because the river's backing up, sewers backing up. You get mold and mildew problems in basements on the walls. We sell the ozonators for uh, eliminating the, the mold and mildew problem. Uh, cars that have been on uh, lease or been traded in where there's smokers, where they've had pets that have had accidents in the car, or kids that have had accidents, and there's odor. They use an ozonator for a half an hour to get rid of those odors forever. That pretty much winds up the whole market. Okay, so thank you very much. And that was Dan from Ozone Environmental Technology with Ubinet. If you're looking for more information on ozone, see issue 5 of Hydromag or visit www.hydromag.co.uk. It's now time for some more quick tips. So before we came down here today, we asked if you could come up with some cheap ways of increasing yield. So for our Hydro Show viewers at home, how can we produce bigger yields on a budget? Okay, well, one of the first things that people forget is that the grow stage is very important to your overall yield. So you need a good humidity level in the grow stage, anything up to 80%. Okay. A very, very cheap and easy way of doing this is what we call humidity sheeting. You just put it up, as you can see, roughly halfway between your light and the top of your plant. What I would normally do is, at home is I would spray it up with a little spray gun just to get some moisture in there. The heat will hit the moisture, turn it into humidity. It's cheap as chips, this is about two pound a meter, so you can't go wrong. Great. Secondly also, yield is directly related to how, the plant, how strong the plant is and how easy it can support itself. So one really cheap way of supporting the plant is just to put some netting up, just some normal uh, garden, garden netting. Um, what, do, what this will do is the plant will then rest against it as it grows and rather than having to put its energy into standing up straight, it will just put its energy into producing flowers or whatever it is you're growing. Uh, thirdly, but not least, again, another way of support is once you've come through the netting, you might find that your plant is actually getting so much yield that it's falling over. Very simple to do, you just pull a yo-yo down, wrap it around the plant, and as the plant grows bigger, the yo-yo will allow it to keep going up where it wants to go. So, three ways, cheap as chips. Fantastic. I'd like to show you Dutch Pro Take Root, um, which obviously the plants in the first two weeks of um, their early stages, they need to get the root mass out. Without the good root system, you're not going to have a healthy plant at the end. So this at the beginning is going to lead to a healthier plant and bigger harvest. This product here is Great White Shark, which is a mycorrhiza. It's made by Plant Success. Um, you apply this to the root system at the early stages. Um, it can be used all the way through um, growing flowering as well, up to about two weeks towards the end. Um, this protects the roots against pythium and other diseases. and it, you have better nutrient uptake because you have a better root system. Basically, it protects the roots. I'm here with Panch at Greenfinger Hydroponics. And no, we're not trying to look cool, but in fact, we're wearing Mabisashi Grow Room glasses. So Panch, why is it so important to wear protective eyewear like this in the grow room? Well, if you're gardening outdoors, you certainly wouldn't stare at the sun all the time. And it's a similar effect in the grow room. We're using high power sodium lamps all the time. There's a lot of ultraviolet, a lot of infrared radiation coming off them. And we're finding with our customers who've been growing a number of years now, they're getting problems with their eyesight, some of them, things like shadows, missing areas of vision. So yeah, that's it. It's really important to protect your eyes when you're in a grow room. So why do you stock Mabisashi glasses in particular at Greenfinger? Okay, well, there's a few things that make Mabisashi glasses particularly advantageous for a grower. Uh, an indoor grower. The first is they get a 60 minute tint for infrared, they get a 45 minute tint for UV. Uh, now a lot of the other types of glasses will let up to 15% of UV and infrared through. 4% can be really damaging to your eyes, whereas Mabasashi will block 100% of these harmful rays. So it's a no-brainer really if you're in a grow room. Now, are you looking for the ultimate grow room? Well, here's Nick with how you can win one. It's the Hydro Show competition. 
it's now time for our weekly competition, where one lucky viewer can win a complete set of plant nutrients. Designed to feed a crop from seed to harvest, this prize is the perfect addition to any hydroponic garden. And best of all, it's completely free to enter. This week's nutrient competition is sponsored by Growing Edge Technologies and the Aroma Formula. The winner will be selected completely at random and contacted privately at the end of next week's show. All entrants of our weekly competitions will be automatically added to our grand prize draw at the end of the series. You could win a grow tent system worth over £3,000. All courtesy of our friends at Agritent. Visit facebook.com forward slash hydro show and get liking for your chance to win one of our amazing prizes. Good luck! This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydro Mag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. Hello, I'm Brad. And I'm Matt. Welcome to South Coast Hydroponics. Canna's mission is to help passionate growers grow their plants. Our plant nutrients have fed millions of plants all over the world and made them all happy and blooming. Daring to stay ahead of things by carrying out our own high level research. Sharing over 20 years of experience, our website will take you into the world of roots, substrates, pH and EC. Our videos will show you how to do it and even better, to understand it. Caring about your life choices is how we know you also appreciate our environmentally friendly standards in our organic fertilizers. MPK Technology in Liverpool, we pride ourselves on providing you with the products you need at the right price. Once more, if the products you want aren't in stock, we'll order them in for you. And if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, we'll happily point you in the right direction. MPK Technology Liverpool, going out of our way to help you grow. Visit www.mpktechnology.co.uk Supplies is one of the leading hydro stores in the UK. Although based in the Northeast, our reputation has spread far and wide. At Grow Supplies, we pride ourselves on your results. The better you do, the better we do. Successful growers like you want a store that means business. So come to Grow Supplies and achieve your growing dreams. Grow Supplies for those in the grow. Visit www.growsupplies.com. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydro Mag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. Before the break, Gemma and Pooja went to Greenfinger in London and Hollands in Burnley to buy their cloning tent systems. Let's go back to the studio and watch them set the systems up. First of all, let's see what Panj from Greenfinger thinks about the Hollands setup. For the tents, Holland's opted for a 1.2 metre silverback for their mother plant and a 60 centimetre silverback for their cloning area. Okay, um, I mean the first thing I'd say about theirs is that it's wasting quite a lot of space. You've got 
Obviously, it's got to sit sideways to it, so you're wasting space horizontally. But also, if you had a tiered one, you're saving space height-wise as well. So that's the first thing, is the amount of space they're using up. We've taken up two tents. Um, also, if you look at the little tent they've got, they're actually wasting space vertically inside that tent itself because they're having to lower the light right down onto the propagator. So again, just another advantage of having a little one up top. In their mother plant area, Holland's chose a 400 watt metal halide lighting system with a Euro reflector. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, say that 400 watt is a bad thing to have at all. Uh, it's just a matter of handling the heat in a small tent. Um, it, it, yeah, 400 watt halide, yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't say that was a bad idea. The 250 we went for, just a simple case of just handling the heat better and it's also slightly cheaper for the budget as well. In his cloning tent, Michael shows a two foot, four tube T5 propagation light. Um, basically they're very similar lights, the only difference is ours is double the width so it's going to, obviously it, you can fit over two, propagation, two propagators at once uh, and it will cover them both very adequately. Um, but they're both um, essentially the same bulbs in them so there's not a huge amount of difference in, in, in the actual light coming out of them. For ventilation and environment in the mother area, Michael opted for a fresh air in with a stale air out system with an SMS twin fan speed controller. Yeah, um, I mean, six inch out and four inch in is a very good system. I wouldn't knock them for doing that at all. That's, that's a good way of doing it, a good ratio. So you've got three out for every two in, so you're going to keep negative pressure. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, they're not quite as quiet as some brand of fans, um, like the RVK we went for, for example. Um, and also they haven't, got a, they haven't got a filter on them at all, so there's no air scrubbing going on there whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I, I, in both sides of ours we've got, but we've got carbon filters just to scrub the air, make sure there's no microbes or pollen or spores or anything like that getting into my plants and contaminating them. Uh, personally, I think it's absolutely vital to have a filter regardless of what setup it is. In his mother plant area, Michael selected a four-pot Wilmer dripper system. The growth medium they provided was Gold Label 6040 a mix of cocoa and clear pebbles. Yeah, so, I mean, they've gone for a four-pot Wilma, a uh, perfectly good system. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever to criticise. Um, we've gone for something a little bit different. We've gone for the, the uh, System 5, which is it's lower slung, so you, you're going to get a bit more height out of, your, out of your propagation tent, which is quite useful. Also, it flat packs, so it's easy to get in and out of places, very, very light to carry. Um, and also, because it's five, you get like the dice shape, which means that your spread of vegetation is going to be better in the tent. And in the cloning area, Michael chose a 77 site propagation tray. Um, yeah, again, this is the problem with having, you know, small tents with a small um, surface area, with a small square meterage. Um, you're going to waste a lot of height just from the fact that it, it, you've got to bring it down so low onto them, and then you're not going to be able to fit too many propagation units in it anyway, too many propagators in it anyway. Um, that's, like I say, that's the benefit of the one we've got. You can fit, you could actually fit more than two in there. If you wanted to, you could go for a bigger propagation light and put even more. We've only gone for two at the moment because we've only got the light to cover two sufficiently. And finally, for nutrition, Michael opted for Formulex and Clonex for his clones and a range of psychonutrient for his mother plants, which included a grow A and B, a nutrient uptake booster, a vitamin booster and a plant repair nutrient. He also included a bottle of ATA Rootfast for when the cuttings are ready for transplanting. We didn't give her any Clonex, no, it's the only thing we didn't give is a root, which is a bit remiss actually, but I, again, it's something I, I wouldn't say don't use. Um, what we have got is Root Safari, which is a, once you have rooted, it performs, you, it forms a gel that you dip your rooted clones into that will perform a protective layer over the roots, which will help with transplant. They'll come quicker through the next blocks you put them in or whatever medium you put them in. Um, and they'll be much more resistant to disease with it as well. Now it's time to find out what Michael had to say about the Greenfinger cloning system. For their tent system, Greenfinger chose the secret Jardin DR120T, a twin tent system with two separatable compartments, one above the other. Different, uh, obviously we don't stock the, the DR the Secret Jardin, uh, very nice tent, uh, you know, brilliant quality. Um, we supplied two tents in total, obviously a, a, a tall one, 1 1.2 and obviously a small one. Um, now obviously the difference obviously between these two tents, obviously other than size, is it does give you the ability to play a lot more with them. For example, the 1.2 can be used as a flower room with a slight change of the bulb 
and you can quite easily fire in there. Obviously the small one does have the option to be used as a single plant, um, bearing you could just put one single mother plant in, all you'd have to do is raise the light and that would be pretty much the only modification you'd need. Um, perhaps maybe a little clip on fan if there was room potentially, but other than that, it's pretty much a, a universal tent. For lighting in their mother tent, Greenfinger opted for a 250 watt metal halide lamp housed in an adjuster wing enforcer. Uh, very nice, again theirs isn't as high, so obviously they haven't got height. Um, their particular setup, very nice. Um, Again, I think a four would have been too much in that particular space, which, you know, obviously you don't want to increase your heat. Um, it's just obviously different tent, different setup, so different light. Um, nice system though. For ventilation and environment in their mother plant area, Greenfinger opted for a six inch RVK 150 A1 extractor with a six inch filter for air scrubbing and a Mr. Pro 3 ultrasonic humidifier. They went for a humidity device, obviously to raise the humidity in your room, which is obviously uh, an ideal thing. We went for a fan speed controller to obviously control temperature, uh, which controls both intake and outtake. We went for that because we thought it was more important to obviously control temperature in and out than obviously raising the humidity. However important, um, your temperature in your room, if obviously it gets too warm, no amount of extra humidity will prevent your plants from suffering from obviously high temperatures and obviously vice versa for low temperature. Um, low temperature well, really high humidity will cause a, obviously an excessive amount of mould mildews to grow. Um, same obviously if it's too warm uh, and that's the reason why we went through the uh, fan speed controller then obviously humidity device. The pot system in Greenfinger's mother plant area included a System 5 five pot 19 litre folding grow system from Global Hydro with an additional Helia air pump and six inch air stone. The growing medium that's applied is Mapito. Uh, obviously we went for the Wilma four pot big. Um, it was a system that I thought would benefit most of that space. It uh, gives you adequate space for allowing them um, to veg, which obviously if you wanted to take cuttings off them on a regular basis is one of the main issues. Um, it's not always good to have more in a smallish space. Obviously you want the cuttings to be healthy and um, you want the air movement around it. Um, compared obviously to their system, which I think had an additional part or two approximately, um, still um, a good system. Again, a different style of system. Um, there's not a really, I don't think there's a massive difference really between the system other than theirs is flatter and wider. Uh, ours obviously is, is more compact. So again, it gives you access maybe to around the sides um, we are obviously damaging the system, you don't have to stand on it or anything. Um, you can quite easily get to the back of the, the pot, so um, maybe easier to move around. But there's not really a massive difference, I think, between the systems. In their cloning area, Greenfinger provided two large unheated propagators with a total capacity of around 100 clones to be placed comfortably. Our cloning station obviously only had a room for as it was for one propagator, which obviously depending on the size of the cube you use could vary between either 77 or to 150. It does have the ability to have more than that. You could fit two propagators in there, which obviously would raise the amount of cuttings you could do if you put it on its side. Um, the light that's supplied with is sufficient for that. It would be able to light it. Um, other than that, again, it's uh, um, depending on space really. Um, if you have space to have it laid on its side, then you can, if you want to, you can. But obviously again, we went for that size tent because it's obviously the most adequate for that size. Um, and it gives you the versatility to have a bit of a play around with. For their mother plant nutrition, Greenfinger supplied Hydrotop's Grow Feed A and B for growth, along with Hydrotop's Bactivator, which helps deter root diseases. For their cutting nutrients, Greenfinger provided Head Start and Root Stimulator both from Hydrotops, which would help give their clones the best start in life. Finally, Greenfinger provided Root Safari, which is a cloning gel used for transplanting clones. They obviously went for a different range than us. We went for obviously the Sarko. I believe they went for uh, the Hydrotops range, um, which uh, brilliant range feed. Um, they also went for a different root stem, if I remember rightly. They went for like a, a one-off treatment um, we went for obviously uh, the root fast, which we've had brilliant feedback from our customers. It's brilliant value for money, brilliant concentration, um, and always gives a really good, really quick root growth. Uh, we also, I think the only thing different than theirs, we added a Clonex, which obviously 
being it was a cloning room, it was just a necessary automatic thing that we always usually pop in. If you're doing cuttings, then more than not, you will require either a scalpel or Clonex. At the end of the day, um, all of the ranges will give a really good uh, either value for money um, and hopefully will also give you uh, a brilliant percentage when it comes to your cuttings coming through at the end of the day. Even though the Holland's tents were more versatile and could be used for different purposes, the challenge was to create a cloning tent system and the DR120T being purposefully designed for the job is a much better selection, giving Greenfinger top marks for the tent category. Both Greenfinger and Holland's went for T5 lighting systems and comparatively used the same amount of wattage per propagator. This means that this category has to be a draw. For lighting in the mother tent, Greenfinger did give a better reflector. However, the extra 150 watts that the Holland's 400 watt lighting system provided would help their mothers recover quicker after their cuttings had been taken, giving Holland's the edge in this area. The ventilation and environment in the cloning area has to be won by Holland's. The provision of the thermostat controller means that their cuttings would be kept at a more constant temperature, whereas Greenfinger's setup only allowed for the fans to be on or off, which gives them far less control. On the other hand, the ventilation and environment provided in Greenfinger's mother area included a clip-on fan and mister, and the extra humidity here would help Greenfinger's mothers massively after cuttings had been taken. Each of the cloning areas used the same type of unheated propagators and rock wool cubes. However, Greenfinger's system did allow for up to three propagators, whereas the Holland's tent, even laid on its side, would only allow for two, giving Greenfinger the point in the cloning system category. Holland's chose a Wilmer system, which is very popular and has certainly served its time as a system that works in the hydroponics industry. Greenfinger's System 5 is definitely innovative and has an extra pop, and we did ask for a system that would take a variety of mother plants, meaning the extra pot gives Greenfinger the win in the mother system category. The plant nutrition category is very hard to call, with both shops offering a comprehensive range of nutrients. However, Hollings did give us a rooting hormone which Greenfinger neglected, meaning the nutrition category is narrowly won by Hollands. Finally, control and measuring. Both systems came with timers and max min thermohygrometers, which are essentially for controlling light and measuring temperature. However, Hollands did provide that extra twin fan speed controller, something which Greenfinger would have put in if it wasn't for budget restrictions. Well, with the scores totted up, it looks like a draw. However, we don't like stalemates on Hydro Show. So the final decision comes down to our producer's discretion. And the winner is... Greenfinger. Having thought long and hard, our producer Pete based a winning decision on Greenfinger's compact tent selection, giving a better overall growing environment for mothers and cuttings. However, he did remark that this system really does need a fan speed controller, something that he would cash out the extra £100 or so to make the system that little bit better. Still to come on this week's episode of Hydro Show. Urban Hydroponics in Preston give us their interpretation of a hydroponic mega room. And we go to Wortley Hydroponics in Leeds for another round of quick tips. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by Hydromag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. Concentrated liquid fertilisers from Matrop are used worldwide by industry professionals. Designed for use in all substrates, Metrop only use the highest quality raw materials, all of which are biodegradable. Thanks to the unique manufacturing process of biosynthesis, our nutrients are more readily available to plants. If you're looking for the best possible flavour and highest yield in your home produce, choose a nutrient based on scientific research. Metrop, quality you deserve. Wortley Hydroponics, a new hydroponics superstore in Leeds. Open seven days a week. Wortley Hydroponics. Growing success. Visit www.wortleyhydroponics.co.uk. Find us on Facebook and YouTube. I am infinite consciousness. I will decide my reality.
righteousness doesn't fight. We don't need the bloody system. Put your guns down. No compliance rebellion. Infinite love is the only truth. Everything else is illusion. Come on. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Grow Supplies is one of the leading hydro stores in the UK. Although based in the Northeast, our reputation has spread far and wide. At Grow Supplies, we pride ourselves on your results. The better you do, the better we do. Successful growers like you want a store that means business. So come to Grow Supplies and achieve your growing dreams. Grow Supplies for those in the grow. Visit www.growsupplies.com. Hello, I'm Brad. And I'm Matt. Welcome to South Coast Hydroponics. This episode of Hydro Show is sponsored by HydroMag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine. For those of you that tuned in last week, you may remember our Mega Rooms feature with Greenfinger. Well, this week it's the turn of Urban Hydroponics in Preston, who will no doubt have their own ideas about how to create a super grow room. Let's take a look. Urban Hydroponics split their demonstration space into three areas, one for cloning, one for a mother plant and a third for a main growing area. In the main growing area, Urban Hydroponics brought six power plant aero wing air cooled reflectors loaded with Sunmaster dual spectrum lamps powered by 600 watt Hacienda ballasts. The lighting system is controlled by a MaxiGrow 8-way MaxiSwitch Pro. Cooling these lights is a 200mm Air Force 2 fan speed with three speeds. Pulling the air through a 900mm cube, the Air Force is designed to provide maximum airflow with minimum noise. For extra cooling in the main area, a second Air Force fan was supplied. Both fans were controlled by a Rhino RC2 600W fan controller. The growing setup in the main area is an IWS 24 pot deep water culture system a high-yielding automatic system which oxygenates the roots and recycles the water used. For bringing the cuttings on, Urban Hydroponics used a 1.2 metre tent containing a 24-pot vegetator. The lighting in this tent is a 250-watt self-ballasted CFL with a light temperature of 6,400 Kelvin. The vegetator is designed for use in 1.2 metre tent and can take up to 24 plants to be grown under just one light. For the cloning area, Urban Hydroponics used a 1.2 meter tent containing an extreme 36 site aeroponic propagator and a platinum hydrogrower single pot dripper system. For lighting, they used another 250 watt self ballasted CFL. Also in the room, Urban Hydro placed a bottle of CO2 controlled by an Ecotechnics Unis CO2 controller. The UNIS can be easily programmed to release the correct amount of CO2 into the atmosphere, helping with photosynthesis. Finally, to complete their mega room, Urban Hydroponics supplied the Advanced Nutrients Bigger Yield Kit containing a range of hydroponic additives for use throughout the plant's life cycle. The growth medium they supplied was gold labelled clay pebbles.
Thank you to Urban Hydroponics for getting involved with Hydro Show Mega Reams. All the setups featured in the series can be found in our official magazine. Visit www.hydromag.co.uk to find out more. It's now time for another round of quick tips. This time from Dean at Wortley Hydroponics in Leeds. Humidity can be a massive issue, especially in the summer months. I would recommend something like this, a simple humidifier, which will pump a lot more moisture into your air and your leaves won't tend to kill, especially in the summer months when they can, they can suffer a lot. It'll also help nutrient uptake and your plants will thrive. This is fully adjustable, so you can adjust uh, the humidity that you want in, into the grow room at any time. Uh, just simply fill it with plain water, a nice stream of gentle mist gives your plants everything they need to thrive. Silicon, a massive part of a plant's development, often overlooked. I find there's many silicons on the market today. They can decrease and increase your pH. Obviously, you can control that with pH up and down. But in my opinion, Hygiene's Budlink Silicon is the best on the market today. It will increase your nutrient uptake, also protect against dehydration and disease, and will strengthen your cell walls. I would strongly recommend any sort of trace mix on the market today. People often are too quick to rush to these products when the plants are poorly. If you use these products from the start to the end, you will maximise the plant's potential and also keep it lush and green. To flush or not to flush? I would recommend using any sort of flush to get rid of the excess salts in your plants. People tend to use water. However, there is no nutrition in pure water where the flushes contain a little bit of nutrient at this critical late flowering stage. Rooting stimulators. I would always recommend to use one throughout the whole of the plant's life. People often look at leaves and see deficiencies, but it could be down to the root system. Use any root stim on the market today. You'll see a healthy, vigorous root growth and minimum deficiencies. People often ask me, can they not just use a weak version of their A and B as a plant start feed? But I'd always suggest you use a specifically designed nutrient for the plant's early growth phase, which is higher in boron. Do you know, Gem, we're halfway through the season already. Oh, I know. But there's still lots to come, though. And here's Nick with what's coming up on next week's episode. Coming up on episode four of Hydro Show, Gemma interviews Fernand from Swiss hydroponics manufacturer Hortiline. We see what the girls have learned so far in the series in the presenter challenge. Gemma has a lesson in transplanting with Nico from Aquaculture. Robert from Metrop explains biosynthesis, a plant nutrient manufacturing process. We get some quick tips from Greenfinger Hydroponics. Holland Hydroponics set up a hydroponic mega room. And we see a DIY hydroponic system for tomatoes at the aquaculture greenhouses. All this and more on the world's first hydroponic TV show. Remember, as always, you can watch this episode of Hydro Show again on our website. Just visit www.hydroshow.tv. You'll find additional footage at youtube.com forward slash Hydroshow TV. You can find more Hydro information in our magazine. Visit www.hydromag.co.uk. For now, that's just about all we've got time for, but join us next week for more Hydro Show. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. This episode of Hydro Show 
is sponsored by Hydromag, the UK's independent hydroponics magazine.